Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habatifillah Continuing on in our second sitting uh, in the study of Sheikh Abdul Razak's uh, The Excellent Way of Seeking Forgiveness uh, He left off with the uh, saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The statement of Allah wa ta'ala in his divine speech From his divine speech, the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fi kitab al kareem قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنُطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا فَإِنَّهُ هُوَ غُفُورُ الرَّحِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم Say, O my servants who have transgressed greatly against themselves through sins, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins to those who repent. Indeed, He is the oft forgiving, the most merciful. Surah Al Zumar, verse 54. The Shaykh mentions some of the Salaf have said that this ayah from the Book of Allah is the one that gives the most hope to the one who seeks forgiveness. Moreover, Allah the Most High, in encouragement of seeking forgiveness and in making clear its excellence and its fruits both in this worldly life and in the hereafter, Refer to what Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam said. He says, I said to them, ask forgiveness from your Lord. Indeed, he is oft forgiving. He will send rain to you in abundance and he will give you increase in wealth and children and bestow on you gardens and rivers. Surah Nuh, verse uh, 10 through 12. This tremendous ayah promises numerous benefits and offers important lessons for those who seek forgiveness and for those who constantly ask forgiveness for their sins. It is related that a man came to Hassan al-Basri, the noble tabi'i, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, and complained to him of poverty. So he said to him, ask forgiveness of Allah. Another man came to him complaining that he did not have any children. So he said to him, ask forgiveness of Allah. A third man came to him complaining of the barrenness of his garden. So he said to him, ask forgiveness of Allah. He then recited to them the saying of Allah, the perfect and the most high I said to them, ask forgiveness from your Lord. Indeed, he is offered, uh, off forgiving. He will send rain to you in abundance, and he will give you increase in wealth and children and bestow on you gardens and rivers. Surah Al-Nur, verse 10 through 12. Ahabatifillah. <clears throat> this shows us the importance of returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking forgiveness to him for all of our, uh, not just our sins, but for our needs. So in, in, in actuality, when we seek forgiveness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are actually seeking risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it shows that there's a uh, relationship between our risk, our provisions and our needs and our wants and uh, seeking forgiveness and the sins that we do. And our sins can be a hijab. They can, can, can form a barrier between, uh, uh, with our relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise with our needs and our risk. So it's very important. Use this holy month to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I get so many questions from our brothers and sisters and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of their affairs easy and good and protect us and pres preserve us and forgive us all uh, about issues of serious health uh, issues that some people are tested with. Some people are tested in their wealth. Some people are tested with family. Some people are tested with death. And in all of this, we can say to go back, and this is a reminder first to me as reading this, and I've already benefited from reading the Sheikh's uh, treaties and these ayat, is that seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. Then the Sheikh, he said, Hafidhullah ta'ala, these then are some of the fruits of seeking forgiveness and some of its benefits in this worldly life. As for the hereafter, then the benefits of seeking forgiveness are very great and tremendous. With regards to the sunnah, there are many texts from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam encouraging the seeking of forgiveness and making clear its excellence. From them is the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu that is reported by, amongst others, a tirmidhi in his sunnah. He said, Allah's messenger alayhi salatu wasalam said, Allah the Most High said, O son of Adam, as long as you supplicate to me and hope in me, I will forgive you what you have done, and I do not care. O son of Adam, if your sins were to reach the lofty regions of the sky, then you ask me for forgiveness, I would forgive you. O son of Adam, if you were to come to me with enough sins to fill the earth, but you met me 
uh, not associating anything with me, I would bring you the like of it and forgiveness. Ahabatifillah, this shows us that Tawheed is, is not just theoretical, just knowing the categories of Tawheed, but knowing and actualizing, practicing and understanding Tawheed is very important, and that's a sabil for your forgiveness. That's a sabil. It's a means for having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you. Likewise, seeking forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal, that this will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and no matter how numerous your sins, are, how severe your sins are, how wicked you have been, and you know you've been wrong for so many things that we've done. And I'm talking to me. I'm not even talking to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive us. And so this is one thing, and, and I received a question recently, uh, and, and that first, the initial ayat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ O oh, say, O oh, my servants who have transgressed greatly against themselves through sins, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. So don't despair of the mercy of Allah. Yes, you're making dua to, for Allah to cure you, for Allah to increase your riz, and it didn't get answered yet. You didn't see that riz. You're still sick. But you don't know when Allah's gonna give you, give you uh, when He's gonna answer that du'a. You don't know if He's answered it by keeping you alive and giving you another chance to repent. You don't know if He's answered it by continuing to give you riz. You don't know if He's answered it by all the blessings that you have and so many people don't have. Look at our brothers and sisters in Philistine being killed by the wicked Yahud. They're killing them, gunning them down, and the world's just sitting there looking. And the Muslims are just sitting there, morta, comfortable in Ramadan. And likewise, all the other trials and tribulations our brothers and sisters are going through in the hunger. We're just a little bit hungry from fasting. But we get to break our fast. And we break it with the most extravagant meals, many of us. Wallahu musta'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah bless us with a class with the bad Allah sunnah. So never give up on, uh, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why I did this treatise, because it's going to remind us. And we need this reminder not to give up on Allah. And He won't give up on you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh then said, also, uh, he said, so the proof in this hadith of Qudsi for the excellence of seeking forgiveness is in the second sentence. That is the saying of Allah the Most High, O son of Adam, if your sins were to reach the lofty regions anan, of the sky, as for the anan of the sky, then it is said it means the clouds. It also said it is the extent of the sky that is reached by one's eyesight. So even if the sins were so many, so various, so monstrous, Allah the Majestic and Most High would forgive the servant if he asked him for forgiveness. And I want to end with this uh, thing, and this is actually pertaining to the Sheikh. And I remember in one of his durus, and he mentioned about, it was outside the Haram, I believe, and he said that there was some youth out there and they were blasting music. Okay, and he approached them and gave them down and said, you know, Ya Shabab, you know, this is haram and da da da. And he did it in a very nice and gentle way. And he said, SubhanAllah, after some time, he saw that same Shab and he was seeking knowledge. He was a Talib al Ilm. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with guidance. Bless us with Ilm and Nafi, Ruskin Tayyu, Ilm and Taqabil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us in you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us in you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us in you. May Allah guide us in you. May Allah increase our riz and provide for us and protect us and preserve the Muslims and give the Muslims everywhere a beautiful month of Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with khair and protect us from sharr. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.